YouTube. If you, <laughs> YouTube is everything. I fixed my dryer. My mom's like, you can just quit teaching and work for Geeks or Us. I redid that MacBook, like literally opened it apart, put some new RAM in, put the new solid state drive. And it took me 10 minutes, but it's YouTube. Like I fixed my dryer belt with YouTube. <laughs> yeah. We did learn how to take the top off the, the Jeep with YouTube, which yeah. was good because I would not have known how to do that. Good old things YouTube. that you can learn right it is like mm -hmm. i just saved a 2010 macbook that i was gonna toss and now it's running like so smooth that's amazing it is a couple hundred well, bucks but the couple hundred bucks is worth it jana i have a super old laptop in my basement have at it let me know what you want done to it i'll youtube it and figure it out <laughs> hi nat I appreciate everyone joining us today. It's we got 16 participants and it's Ew. it's a tough day to be with us because it is like gorgeous outside and hot and sunny and so I appreciate you being here. If you're just joining us, we're Tuesday talks with the primary crew. And I think we're are we at two o'clock? We are. Yeah. Okay. We've got our guest features here. I know Tanya's here. I haven't seen Lindsay. Yep, yet. she's here. Yet? Okay. All right. Cool. Well, then let's get started. Super. So our hosts today, as usual, myself, Nicole, and Jana are here. And we're just kind of your moderators. The guest teachers are the ones that share all the cool stuff. So we have two guest teachers for you today. We have Lindsay Wilson um, from Victor Lauriston, who teaches grade one. And we have Tanya King Neenhouse, who teaches grade three, four at High Park. And they're both going to share some pretty cool stuff with us, um, which we'll get into in a few minutes. We want to do our land acknowledgement. I'm assuming it's Nicole on the slides. It is. She's our slide deck lady. We acknowledge that the land on which we are gathered is part of the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Odawa, Potawatomi, and Delaware nations. These indigenous nations, known as the Anishinaabek and Lenapau, agreed through their ancestral languages to the mutual sharing of the land with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Today, these responsibilities and obligations extend to all peoples. All right. So kind of our agenda for the day, we're going to do a quick check in around provocations. And then we've got our two guest teachers. So Lindsay's going to talk to us about using Screencastify, which I believe was a few people were asking about that last week. So hopefully this helps answer some questions. And Tanya's going to talk to us about um, upping engagement in Google Meets using Google Jamboard, which I'm pretty excited about as well. Um, so before we get to that, just checking in around last week, we talked about provocation videos. Um, and if Nicole, if you want to flip to the next slide, there's just a quick reminder again about what those are in case anyone forgets. Um, so they're just videos that pose a problem or open-ended idea that just piques the curiosity of the viewer and um, kind of like a cliffhanger for your students. So just curious in the chat, or if you want to come off mic, did anybody try one and want to tell us about it? It's okay if you didn't or maybe you'll get bolder as the session goes on. So we'll leave that there. And if anybody wants to talk about it, then we'd be happy to hear from you uh, throughout the session as well, okay? Um, so I know we've got a lot of content to cover today, so let's kind of get to that. Um, and then if we have any questions at the end that people are curious about, we can get to those as well. If that sounds good, what do you think, ladies? Should we do the content first and then questions at the end, or? Yeah. Well, 
Okay. I want to make sure we get to Gwen's only because I'm wondering if anyone else has had issues. Could we just ask oh, someone? Right. So Gwen was indicating that yesterday and today there's been some issues with Google Meets. Has anyone else been running into issues this week with Google Meets? So Judy's shaking, yes, her head. Judy, what are, what's been happening with Google Meets for you? You just have to un- yeah. um, I could only see one child today. I could not get the grid format to come up, no matter what I tried. That is exactly what Gwen was saying as well. Oh. So, so maybe, maybe it's something right within the Google Meets uh, platform. Maybe it is. I One of the parents told me that their son's class had the problem yesterday and it was a Google problem. And Sarah just shared with us that uh, Jeff from their school said the grid view isn't working anymore and you have to remove, remove the grid view that is installed. But then Sarah said hers was fine today. Were you being, Sarah, were you able to see um, all your grid view, like everybody? Oh, we got lots happening. In the right, so Rod here. just said that sometimes the, the plugins uh, break down when the apps are updated. And then um, Jess just said, Sarah's correct, delete the grid view and you will have the grid view from Google. But if you, re if you remove the grid view from, is it from Google Meets, Jess? Um, Sarah, I'm wondering about, uh, Sarah, I was on her um, Google Meet with her class on Thursday and you showed me how to do that add-on for the grid view using google i believe am i correct sarah is that what happened yes it is um but jeff is saying now that it's already in the um, google meets and you don't need to install it is what jeff is saying so to uninstall it it will then work yes okay so i don't I was going to ask you to maybe post that link you sent me, but we don't think we need that anymore. I don't think so. Jesse, do you know? I see. Yeah, so we worked on it for like two hours with Kathy and it wasn't working. We couldn't see any of the kids. And then as soon as we deleted it, we logged out of Google Meet, went back in. Google Meet now has their own grid view. So you don't need to download the extension. Awesome. Now you have to get all the parents to delete that extension. Otherwise, the kids will log on and they won't be able to see anybody. Oh, so mm -hmm. that's, that's, we need like, I think we need a tutorial on that. So Karen, mm -hmm. Kirkendall in activity, you can ask her, it's shared in our Colonel Cameron file, but we sent it home to parents and they uninstalled it and everything was great today. So there are okay. some instructions for how to delete that extension that we can get a hold of. Yeah, and she did it like with pictures and arrows saying press. Oh, oh wow. If we could get a hold of that, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna message Karen right now. Thanks, Sam. Now see if we can get that. We're on it, Gwen. So uh, hi everyone, it's Deanna. Uh, just another problem that we were finding with the Google Meet was uh, it was going into an Internet Explorer uh, rather than a Google Chrome um, Meet. So once we move that link, instead of being to a Internet Explorer over to a Google or to the Google Chrome, it, it worked. So, but yeah, I'm having the exact same trouble as well. So thanks, I appreciate the tips. <laughs> thanks, so use Google Chrome as your browser. I'm going to yes. try and get that cheat sheet for us. Thanks, Sam. Just to clarify, though, I was using Chrome as the, um, it was the Chrome extension that I had, had installed. I wonder so if we have to uninstall that, Gwen, and then if we uninstall that Chrome extension, that Google Meets has their own now in, like, right embedded, so we might not need it. Maybe it's okay. uh, causing interference. Okay. Yeah, Gwen, it's right in the bottom right-hand corner. There's three dots. And, and they do have their own little uh, okay little yeah thank you awesome. look thanks at that. to all everyone those, yeah See, people we troubleshoot you. it together <laughs> okay 
Good. I'm just, uh, I see three dots bouncing. So hopefully by the end of this session, I'll be able to at least post the link or something for that for anyone else looking for the, the cheat sheet there. Okay. Wonderful. And thanks to uh, Jesse and Sarah there for starting that. That was good. Thank you. Okay. So any more questions or that we want to get to, or do we want to get into our um, content? No, it looks like we're good. We can get right into the content. Okay. So um, I'm just going to back to my slides here. So Nicole, if you want to skip to the next slide there, perfect. So we are going to learn how to use Screencastify to teach a lesson. And Lindsay is going to teach us all about that. So Lindsay, are you ready to start sharing your screen? Yes. Okay, awesome. Give it a try. Okay. So Lindsay's gonna, I think, show us a little video first of something she created using Screencastify. And then she's gonna kind of walk us through how to do it. So we'll watch the video first to kind of give you context of, of what we're going to be doing or what she's going to be showing. And um, then she'll teach and so we'll we'll kind of monitor any questions throughout we'll let her explain a bunch and then we can ask a bunch of questions when she's done if that works for everybody all right um so this is just a this is i'm going to show you a shorter version of the long video that is all about identifying coins and using the screencastify chrome extension to capture that video so we'll start there taking a look at the first coin you see here what is this coin? Well, this is a penny and it is worth one cent. It is one cent. One cent. This is the coin that helps us identify how much each of our other coins are worth. So next we have our, if you guess nickel, you are right, our nickel and that has the beaver on it. And the beaver is worth, or the nickel is worth, Five so that means five pennies are needed to make up one nickel. Looking at our next coin, it has a sailboat. This is a dime, and our dimes are worth ten pence. Just they are the smallest of our coins. Then we have our quarters. Quarters have caribou on them. Our quarters are worth. 25 cents. Then we have our loonies. Our loonies are worth one dollar, but one dollar also means 100 cents or one dollar. So that is or means the same thing. Lastly, we have our toonies. Our toonie is worth, if a dollar is worth one dollar, a loonie is worth one dollar, our toonie is worth two dollars or two hundred, so two hundred cents or two dollars. You can see this is our money symbol. So that just gives you a little idea of what Screencastify looks like when you have recorded a video. And now I'm just going to take you to where you can locate this. So this is a Chrome extension. You can just go to screencastify.com and there are three versions. The free version allows you to record videos up to five minutes and it does give you all of the um, ability to record your screen as well as your webcam and to trim your video. One of the great things I love about this extension is that it always auto saves the videos to your Google Drive. So you won't lose the videos and it's easy to find them when you're looking. So if you are interested and you decide you want this extension, instead of this gray bar here, you will have a pink bar that gives you the opportunity to add the extension to your Chrome browser. And it shows up as a little pink arrow. When you click on your pink arrow, This handy little box comes up. It gives you the option to choose from 
taking a recording of your browser tab. So you can choose one of the browser tabs that you have open and it will only record that. You can do your desktop. If you're jumping from screen to screen, let's say you're using um, the Mathies and then you want to jump to a Google slide. So you can move back and forth between the two, the two views and you are still recording your video. Or you can do a webcam option only. So this is also great for read aloud. Here you see your microphone. You do need to toggle that on if you want to be able to hear yourself in the video. And you can toggle your webcam on. This gives you an option that if you have your desktop open, a little tiny version of yourself will pop up in the bottom corner. I'm going to keep that toggled off today because it tends to interfere with these Zoom sessions. So what I'm going to do now is take you through how you can use this extension with Seesaw to create a video. You can also use Mathies or Jamboard or Toy Theater or any other whiteboard app that you have. I like to use the Smart Notebook file on my school computer to do my whiteboard pieces, but any of those other apps will be an option. So if we are going to record one of our activities, I have the screen open and ready. I click on the pink arrow. And I tend to work with the desktop, but you can click the browser tab as well. And then we press record. We get a screen that pops up just to make sure this is what we want. And we click share. And then we get a countdown. When the countdown is up, you're able to start recording. Because we're all very familiar with these at this point, we can use the tools. I would grab my pen and I would start to record saying, okay, everyone, we're going to take a look at our Canadian coins. If you know what this coin is at home, shout it out to someone there. This is worth one cent. And then I would continue on to complete the activity with the rest of the coin. When I'm finished recording my video for Screencastify, I go back to my pink arrow. This gives me the option, if I didn't like what I recorded, I can throw it in the garbage right away. I can replay it or pause it, or I can stop. When I stop, it's going to pull this whole video up in a separate window where we can do some editing. So one of the biggest pieces I do need to emphasize is that you want to make sure you give your video a title. If you don't give your video a title, it can make it tricky to find. Lindsay? Yes. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't see your screen anymore. Your Why? screen's you not sharing. Screen? Okay. Just a second. We lost our screen sharing. That's this okay. While you're getting that set up too, I'm going to, I posted a link in the chat too for anyone who is looking for that video about the extension on um, Google Meets. So let me know, click on it, let me know if it works. Um, maybe when Lindsay's done, I can, if it's not working, I can try and tweak it. But that came from Karen, so I appreciate her sharing that. Okay, go ahead, Lindsay. Um, are, we're back up? Yep. Okay, so if we didn't see that before, when you hit the stop button with your Screencastify, it creates that new window with your video in place. It's important to make sure you give your video a title so that you can find it later. And the great thing about this is if you play your video back and you don't like the beginning, you can trim that beginning because we're all very familiar with it. Or you can trim at the end as well. Garbage right away. Once you are happy with where your video is and you like what you hear, you click Save Trim. And this all comes with the free version of this particular extension. If you, and I, as we're all aware, Oh, ready? And it would start to record okay. right now. Okay, everyone. Yeah, we're going to go to our meeting point. 
Oh, I seem to have lost our video. Just one moment, I'll bring it back up. There we go. So once it's labeled and you trim the video, you can easily share this, whether it's with Google Classroom or Seesaw, we have several share options. You can copy the shareable link, easy enough. You can get an embedded code. You can publish to your YouTube channel if you have one. And you can download or share right to your Google Classroom. So I love this because you can just click. It enables the link. You can go back to your activity. And you can add it here as a link. And it will pop up for the kids to click on, which is wonderful because you don't have to worry about downloading or uploading. Once it's in your Google Drive, it will pop up for the kids. If you see a blank screen, that's okay. It's because your video is just currently uploading to your Google Drive. Once it has completed that upload, the kids will be able to click on it no problem. And then you can save it. So I do wanna show you a couple of places where you can find your videos. If you go back to that pink arrow, you can find everything you have recorded in a collection in your Streamcastifies. So everything that you record with that particular extension will pop up in that place. The other place that you can find your work is in your Google Drive. A folder is automatically connected and it is called Screencastify. So this is the second place where you can find all of this work that you've done. And then you can organize it into folders if that's how you like to organize things. So it's a great extension because it gives you the option to create these videos in, what, in using whatever tools work best for you and you're not struggling with your webcam in the same way you might be as if you're trying to write on chart paper, for example, and capture that view. Do we have any questions? I'm just trying to think if there was anything. No. Else. Well, it doesn't look like any questions yet. Why don't we give just everyone a minute just to kind of process everything. Thank you for sharing that. That was awesome. Uh, very clearly laid out. So easy to follow for coming from someone who hasn't used it yet. Um, are there any questions for Lindsay? You can come off the mic or just put it in the chat. Pam is sharing with us that LKDSB.com does give everyone access to a personal YouTube channel. which makes it easy to get those links as well. Um, I love that there are so many options for you to get the information. And the parents that I'm working with at this point at Victor Lauriston have not had any issues. While we're waiting, if there aren't any questions, if you are into your kind of Bitmoji classrooms and that kind of thing, it's super easy to put your links in there as well. You just take that link and for this, I'll just see if this one will pull up really quickly. This is my digital library that I've created and each of these books has a Screencastify link attached to it and the kids love it because it's easy to access. So that's another way you can use Screencastify and the videos are quick and easy to make. So that's another piece that's easier. If you do have the paid edition, you can open the editor section, which allows you to do a little bit more cut and paste and moving things around. So you can link a whole bunch of videos together and you don't have a time limit. So if you're working on putting several lessons together, you can link a storybook and a, and a language lesson connected to that and guided reading in there. There's so many pieces of the puzzle you can kind of put together, which is really nice in this editor feature. Awesome, it doesn't look like there are any questions for you, Lindsay. Okay. Looks like you explained it incredibly. It's a lot yeah. of fun to try. Cool, that was awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. Okay. okay. Yeah, I see the screen back, so that's good, yeah. 
Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. That was great. And I, uh, I'm amazed every time we do this about just like the stuff that all of you guys are doing. Like, it's just, it's so cool. Uh, Lindsay, I like how you can still teach from home in a live way and students can see your number talk or whatnot come through and you actually model something live and you don't have to be on screen at all. Um, but yet your students can see, still hear you and actually see you modeling what it is or showing what it is you're showing. So I think that Screencastify is a, a really valuable tool. And remember we talked about micro videos, is that two weeks ago? Without paper, I was struggling at the beginning of this process. And Have we lost her or is it me? No, I think, I, nope. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, she kind of cut out there, but I was just going to say, like, remember how, like, two weeks ago we talked about uh, micro videos and, like, just a real quick, easy way to teach, like, a lesson? And then last week we talked about provocation videos and, like, what a cool tool to be able to try those out. So that's. That's really neat. Oh, she just wrote and said she has internet issues. <laughs> Don't is we all, Lindsay? Is this so all there. finding it hard to, to hear? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to pass it off to, I think, Nicole, and she can introduce our next cast teacher. Hey, so we have Tanya um, back again. Tanya was with us early on in our Seesaw sessions. And Tanya is going to show us Jamboard and how she has been using Google Meets to engage her students, but um, also through Jamboard. And you will see how actually Screencastify and Jamboard can then be used together because Jamboard is like a whiteboard that you can use. So Tanya, you're going to dive into that a little bit here. Yes. And I will, so I will stop sharing and you can take it over. All right. So just while you're switching out there, Tanya, we just have one request from Judy. She was looking yes. for a bit of help with sharing Jamboard. So hopefully that's something that you'll be able to uh, talk about too. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, so I'm just going to, um, I just want to sort of preface this all by saying um, I've noticed that my my kids in my class have, their participation has really dwindled um, in terms of the Google Meet. So it started out pretty strong. I had a few and then as the weeks were going on, I had less and less involvement. So I started to sort of question what I was doing and what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. And I, I kind of realized that past the, you know, the introductions and, you know, showing us our dogs and cats and all of that stuff, like we, we, we kind of were at a, a, a standstill. So I started looking more into Jamboard to start using more like an inquiry provocation, open-ended questions and sort of posing it to them that way. Um, and so what I would do is I would open up the, at the beginning of the week, I would say, okay, this is sort of where our, our question's going to go. Um, you know, meet us, you'll have to be at the Google meet to get the real question. Once the question's out and we've all had our guests on the Jamboard, then I'm going to video it live on Seesaw. So there was that connection back to Seesaw, just trying to hook all of my kids that maybe weren't there, but trying to get them so that they would at least come to the, to the Google Meet session. So we'll see whether it works. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I just started it last week. So I'm very hopeful though, because they did seem very interested. So uh, I'm just gonna share my screen with you. Nicole, you may have to <laughs> walk me through this. See, you have it. You got it. I got it. We're fine. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you quickly where you're going to find Jamboard because it is something you already have. <laughs> it is something you already have. It's already in your Google suite. So if you go over to your little grid here and you scroll down, this is Jamboard right here. All right, so just that little J. Um, so when you click it, and I'm going to click onto the one that's already pre-made, um, when you click it, it's going to show you the, um, it's very similar to any of the Google Suite um, platforms. Like it's, it's the same setup, it's got the little check mark and it brings up a whole, new, a whole new jam for you every time. So 
Um, Nicole, can you see that? Yep. Okay. All right. So this was the question that I used to try to hook my kids and get them engaged in our Google Meet. So I just said, Mrs. Neenhouse has something new in her backyard. I want you to guess what it is. And then I gave the clues. But before I shared this with them, the most important part to this is making sure that you go down into the who has access portion of this sheet and you change it because it will automatically set to on. All right. So just public on the web, but you want to change it to anyone with the link. All right. Because you only want people to access it through the link that I give you. All right. And I'm going to show you how you're going to link it for your students so that on a Google meet, all they have to do is click the link in your chat box. Okay. So you're always going to click anyone with the link. Can you just show that last step one more time? What did you click to get yep. to that screen there? Yep. So, um, you're going to go to your shares, like your share, right. Yep. right. And then you're going to go to change. Okay. Cause you want to change who has access to it because if it goes to public, it's going to go out to anybody. So in all of these, like you want to make sure that you can actually find the, the one that you want. So you want to just share it to people who have the access to the link. So it's the second one here. All right. And so you're going to click that and then that gives them access to the link and will give them access to the jam. And I was going to just add in there, Tanya, yeah. whenever I do anything that I know I want to reach all of the students, as uh -huh. soon as I create that document in Google Docs or Google Slides or whatever it is, Jamboard, I make sure I do this right away when I create my document because then I don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> because once you send it out to your kids, I think the default is off only to specific people and then they won't have access to it at all. So it's kind of good to get in the habit of if you're sending link out to all your kids, change that access to anyone with the link right away. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you, if worse, if worst case, you know, even if you do forget, it is a quick fix, but it does, it takes a little bit of time. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you, that the people who have access to it can edit. So right now, as it stands, it, it's just as can view mode, but you want to make sure that you change it to can edit because that gives them access to their own, their own little screen or their own little template in the Jamboard. So then I'm going to save it. Okay. And then once you've saved it, it's going to take you back to that original screen where you can, um, like where you're picking who has access to it. I go down here and I do click the owner settings because you own the jam. And I like to prevent the editors from changing the access or adding new people. It just gives that extra level of protection so that no one else can come in and start changing things on us. So I do like to click that just because I think it's, it's just very, very important given the, um, the, the online platforms. So they so have that, ability to edit. They just don't have ability to give access to anyone else. No, no. So it's, it's tech. Like, I mean, it is my jam. So I don't want to give them the freedom to start sharing it with other people. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to click the link in the search, the search bar, and I'm going to just copy. All right. And I'm going to head back to our, our zoom session and I'm going to put it into the, the chat. Nicole, can you see that? Anyone's Cause this is yeah. nothing in the chat yet. Okay. I'm going to click it and I'm going to paste it into the chat. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. It's there. If everybody can, if you are interested in, um, actually going into the jam board. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I see Morgan Purdy's joined. So what you're going to do when you join in is I want you to find one of the screens that is open. So one of the, the pages, and just add your name to it using the left, the left hand marker or pen feature. Okay. And you can just switch to your own slide. So you can go, yeah, I see people are doing it right now. And just add your name to any open slide that you can. And I'll just give you a second to do that.
All right, and once you have added your name to one of the open slides or one of the open um, frames there, then you can, if you are feeling up to it, you can actually try to answer the question. So Mrs. Neenhaus has something new in her backyard. I want you to guess what it is. Put your answer on the sheet you've assigned yourself. Can you read the, uh, the rules again? You had some th three rules there or something. The clues, yep. Yeah. So it's color is on the page. It is not made by humans or a human and it won't be here forever. All right, perfect. And so the beauty of this is like, you can go through and you can read. So I'm going through the slides right now as the owner and I'm going through and I'm reading. So I see that on our second slide, it says a robin's egg, um, a robin's egg. I, oh, I see, yep, robin eggs, good, yep. Okay, amazing. So what I can see going through the slides is that everybody has answered their own, like in their own way. So they've all answered the question. You all got it right, by the way. But I see some of you have sort of experimented with using the sticky notes and I'll get to those little features at, at the, the left-hand side. Um, so Nicole, is there anything that you want to add to this? Because I can move on to that demo, that demo jam. Or are there any questions or anything? All right, so right now you're just experiencing as a student. So if you were yeah. Tanya and you were hosting this at your Google Meet, it is really just as simple as copying that URL um, and, and copying it and pasting it into your Google Meet chat. All the kids right from there will click on it and have immediate access to it. And yeah, then they it really each, is that easy. Yeah. You, don't, you don't even, like you don't have to worry about copying it back to Seesaw or anything like that. It just goes right into the Google Meet. So as long as you can copy, paste, and add it into your chat box, your kids are going to have that immediate access to it. So they can still hear you, and you don't even have to be on camera. Like, you can still yeah. teach live, but you still have your, um, like you can still be private about it too, right? Yes. That's what I was just going to ask. So the way we were, we jumped into the Jamboard, but we still heard and saw you in a small yeah. little corner. Yeah. They will still be connected to the Google Meet. They'll still be able to hear you in real time live. They just actually get to like manipulate the, the jam. Yeah, it's it's like a live whiteboard screen. So they can, you see what they're doing and they can see what you're doing. The only thing is like, they can't see me scrolling through the pages. Right. So I have the control of, of where I'm at in, in that slide, like in the slide deck, I have the control, but they can't see me going back and forth. They can see what's happening on their page, but not all of the pages that I'm going through. Yeah. So does I'm just any, gonna, Does anybody about. have any questions to date so far? Um, I do. Yep. If, if I don't need the children to have live access to it, if I just want to get more passively as a screen that I'm just writing on for them, for an example, um, is there a simpler way I can just use, like I've been trying to click the present my screen, mm -hmm. but it doesn't pop up as an item that I can share because it's on a new tab or something, I guess. I don't know. So you just want to use it as like a whiteboard? Yeah, right. You should be able to. So like what I would recommend, I'm just going to slide over to the demo. Whoops. I'm just gonna slide into the demo Jamboard that I made. So you should be able to, if you can see what I'm doing here, like yeah. right here. You'll have to go back to your Zoom. So just click back into your Zoom. Otherwise you're gonna be stuck in your Jamboard. Okay, new share? No, you're good, but um, all the participants will just have to connect, like click back to their Zoom. Okay. To see what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, to see what you're doing. Okay. Can I just take a second and share something that Rod just wrote in the chat, which I thought was helpful. Mm -hmm. um, he said, if you added names to the pages ahead of time, then each student could find a specific page, which obviously as adults, we were able to solve that problem, but maybe for younger kids that, that might definitely. be yeah. something. 
and that definitely that is something that I did for my last one. Okay. Yeah, and it it really does it does expedite it a little bit. Um, it does work quicker, but as it stands, like if you only have four or five kids, you can still have them play around with the pen and the marker tool and you can have them add their own or you can yeah. make them. Also too, if you ever have anyone who quickly joins in your Google Meet, it's just as easy as adding in a, a duplicate page, which if, can everyone see the new, the new one, the demo jam? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is where I would, so to that question that was just asked, I would just start your, if you wanted to do like a whiteboard, I would not add any more pages to it and I would just type on your first page. So I would just use your sticky note and use it like this. And then you should be able to share that in your Google Meet just by, by clicking the, the link in your, your web browser and then you can share it with them that way. Yeah, if you don't want them to have access to it, then you just don't uh, copy paste the link into the chat. You should just be able to share. Yeah. So, so if I've got it, um, it open on a tab and I'm in a meeting and I open that tab and that's what I see on my screen and I press present my screen, is that what they'll see on their screen? Yeah. Yep, they should be able to. Okay, because when I press present, my screen there's it pops up as like there's a my my screen with my windows and the people but the um it says i can share that but it doesn't say there's not a choice for me to share the uh jam for some reason are you using your share button over here at the side that your blue share button i might not have done that correctly Okay, so I'm just gonna, if we have time, can I just quickly go over that one more time just to show? Yep. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you change this to anyone with the link. Okay. Okay, because then that gives them access to, to, to okay. the link that you're gonna send. Okay. That and might and also them. change it to edit, correct? At yes, the and then if you want them to be able to, to edit, then you can press edit here. But if you only want it to be like a view only where they're only looking at what you're what you're putting out, you, they're not going to respond. You can yeah. just can view. Okay, I think that's probably the step I missed then. Thank you. Yeah, and then press save and then you can just add in on your um, you just put in your the search bar. You're just going to copy and paste it into your chat and they should have access to it. Okay. Can you can you? Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Nicole. I was going to say, you could even on the fly in the middle of the lesson, like, or like you do your lesson and yeah. then you decide, okay, now I want them to have access. You can quickly go Absolutely. in and change your access to it in that moment. And then now they would have access to it. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't have to be, it does not have to all be pre like pre-made. You can do it on the fly for sure. Kenya, another question. Is there any way to see all of the answers at once or do we have to go through each slide? You know what, that I'm not sure, like a grid view, you can actually go up here. Um, so I only have one slide. What, you know what, I might just, I'm just gonna quickly talk about um, how to duplicate your slides and then show you how you can see them all together. So the nice thing about Jamboard is it also gives you a variety of backgrounds. So if you hit background, you've got your dot paper, um, you have your line paper, you've got your, your grids and all kinds of different things. So let's just say we want to have line paper. If you come up here, um, you can duplicate. So you should be able to see, like you can see quite a few if you hit this option. Can you go back to your May 26th backyard investigation? Yeah. And then if you did that for that one, can we see them all up top there? Can everyone see this? Yep. Yeah, we can see all that. Right. So can you show us where we could see them all or? I'm just gonna go back to the. Yeah. Somewhat. Does that help? Jean, I think, is it Jean that was asking? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, she said it does. Perfect. Okay. There's just, there's so many things that this, that it does. Like we were just saying how simple it is, but it does so much for you. Like it really, it's not fancy, but it really gets the point across. And you can ask so many open-ended questions. You can post an inquiry. Nicole was saying yesterday, you could post a picture of something in nature just to try to stir up some, you know, some questions or 
you can do so much with it. It's just kind of getting familiar, getting familiar with like how it all works, but you can duplicate your pages if you wanted to. Um, and then over on the left hand side, you've got all of your different tools. So you have just sort of like your different, um, your different functions. So you've got your pen, your eraser, your select. If you want to move your sticky note, um, you can type something in here. And then you can use your select tool to, to move it around if you wanted to. Um, and then this is where you can add an image. So you can take an image off, like off the internet um, and you can drag an image in. And this is where Nicole was saying, like you could get a picture of something in nature and ask them to sort of infer, you know, what's happening or what they see. And then the kids love the laser the laser feature too. It's a fun one that they seem to really enjoy. But do, yeah. you, do you have the share, the one that was shared with you? Tim? From you? With a couple ideas, yeah. Yeah, it'll be somewhere. Just give me one sec. Oh, Roger shared a fun idea in the chat. He said he's thinking about a sticky note puzzle with movable pieces. That's a fun idea. An amazing idea. Or like if you had math problems and you they had to order them from greatest to least, but they had to split or something, <laughs> that would be. Totally. Well, or like balancing equations, you have to like find the two pieces that match or something. Yeah. You really, you can do so much with this. Like you can just do so much. It's, it is really endless. Here is well, you know that's going to be our challenge for next week. Yeah. <laughs> There's your yeah, challenge. Yeah. Tanya's challenged you guys. She wants you to do something with Jamboard. Come up with something. There All right. Just a couple ideas like it. You just pull any image. Um, the image could be used for inferencing. You could even just have a one page where all the kids on your Google Meet would see. And collaboratively, you could write a story together even. So someone adds to the story and if they're grade one or whatnot you type on one sticky note for one student and then you have another sticky note as another student continues the story um if you go to the next page tanya like for example grabbing a picture maybe turning it into a new work number talk with subitizing arrays multiplication working on equations um or you give them each their own individual um, mm -hmm. equation or, or number talk, and you can go through and see how they're doing, or you can give them all the same and see the different strategies, like lots of different things. Another teacher, um, Bree Gordon, who was with us for the earlier session, she was um, chatting with me the other day about something she's starting too, and she's like posting a picture for them, um, say the beginning of the week or the end of the previous week, and it's like, this pit week's picture was like five flower pots with like materials around it or whatever and i think it was like okay so you have until wednesday to think about all the math in this picture mm -hmm. and then i don't know if they were like sharing their ideas on the jam board and then they were coming back and meeting again and she was like providing questions for them to answer like it was like a multi-step multi-day process using the jam board and then just like adding to it as they went along which i thought sounded super super fun and if you need to see kind of what everyone else is thinking just from like one well one provocation picture yeah. and see what comes out of it right so that and that's great too um in springboarding off of seeing what everyone thinks about it but a little bit different tanya if you go back to your jam mm -hmm. um or you want to share this link even with everybody in the chat and they could all choose one so everybody sticks to page one and adds a sticky note of an idea you have of what how you think jamboard could be used with um primary students and then everybody will have everybody else's ideas because more brains are better than just one so absolutely all right i'm just gonna bring it back to that first page okay nicole yep and then just delete what I have there. Oh, are you sure? Or keep it and everyone can add around it, but just all different ideas of how you think it could be used um, yep. 
in the classroom or Google Meet or whatnot, any yep. idea that you have. And remember that uh, the sticky note option is your fourth, um, your fourth little, I don't know, picture, I guess you could call it, on the left icon. hand side. The oh, icon. The icon. Thanks, Sam. That's what it is. <laughs> also, my favorite thing about Jamboard is that you get to call it my jam. I, my jam. I like that, too. <laughs> I love that you're like, this is my jam. This is my jam. It, it, just, <laughs> it just screams happy, doesn't it? It really, like, it makes, it really makes me happy when you, every time you said it, my jam, I'm like, that's Tony's jam. So is it just me or is it view only right now? Well, it's, yes, it must it be. Only. So, and th so this is, I'll just show you how quickly you can change it. So if you're Perfect. having a hard time getting in, thanks for reminding me. No, that was because I didn't now, change that. And now you should be able to get in and edit. Oh, and we have a cool share in the chat here. Gwendolyn shared a website that pavel365.com has amazing picture provocations and lessons, info, ideas, literacy focus they could use them for oh. many reasons. So there's a cool thing to check out. Thanks, Gwen. Pam is also enjoying the jam word. In the <laughs> <laughs> it's Tanya's jam, Pam. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Now we've got some people adding their, adding their ideas. I'm trying to click a sticky note, but it won't help. It won't let me. Oh, here we go. Oh, hold on. There it So while everyone's adding these, if you have any questions, feel free to write them in the chat because um, now would be a good time to check them out and answer them. I, the good thing about this as well is after, because it, it's part of Google Suite, it automatically saves, right? So you could do whatever you wanted with your students. They could each have their own page. And then after you still have all that work that the students did in your Google Drive because it just automatically saves. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering, because I'm watching this happen real time, yeah. if you choose a sticky note the same color, does it automatically stack it? Is yeah, that what it's like a post it? It's oh, like okay. a post it. Yeah, so you have to, yeah, you got to move them around. You got to move it after, because I'm noticing all the yellows, when yeah. the yellows were together, that they were actually were stacking on top of each yeah. other, so then you would have to move it after? Yeah. So you could even, though, if you wanted to, you could even assign, like, a certain group of students a certain color of sticky note as well. Ooh. You know, and, and then they could, they could sort of bounce their ideas off, say, the pink sticky notes. Um, it's so, it's, it's endless. It really is. Um, I like, you could also have a mystery picture covered with the sticky notes and remove one at a time, having students try to guess at. Like, how exciting would that be for the kids, right, who are signing, joining up for a Google Meet and you reveal one, one sticky note at a time? That's, they would that's love that. That's a great idea. Like, that's such a good idea. You could see them being them and they're like the guest of the Google Meet and then it would be their face and they'd have to uncover and see who's the guest of the Google Meet or oh, you know, we'll oh, talk about the so author fun. and they'd have their own pictures. Like how great would that be? Yeah, guest, guest author. I'm gonna take a picture of the screen. Can you make, Tanya, can you make sure there's none like on, oh, I can move it, Never mind. I was gonna say, I wanna make sure there's none sitting on top of other ones. Yeah. Oh, mental health check-in, that's great. And great. Yeah. assign a color. I took that idea from Jana. Remember she like at the beginning of this sent us that emoji mental health check-in and each yeah. like heart was a different color. Yeah. So each sticky note could be a different color. And like you can see how this could even be used in the classroom after remote learning as well, right? When doing this with all the kids, they could Absolutely. even have their own iPad and um, you could have page two is a group of four kids who are working together. Page three could be a different group of kids. Yeah. Oh, we've got another overlap. Okay, cool. This is fun. Sam, is that you? Okay, it for the sticky notes. Sorry, I'm not, no, I didn't drag anything. Oh, that's so funny. 
Because I, I was checking the chat. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for for what I wanted to get across. I just have a quick question. Gwendolyn wrote, "You could involve coordinates for the sticky notes." What do you mean by that, Gwendolyn? I was thinking of the if you had a picture and you overlapped it and you labeled along the edges, you could say, you know, A four. Okay, so like the person could choose which sticky note was removed. Like so, it could be like oh, a thing. When could you include that? I was just gonna say with the the grid background. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's almost like a although that grid is really small. It is. But you could make larger square like because you can upload your own from the web. You could just yeah select a larger grid, make yeah. a page, and then duplicate those pages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or was, like if you could box around like a four by four square type thing, mm -hmm. and like just put that on top of the existing grid. Yep. The possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. And Rod, you're right. They are brilliant. We're, we're taking an idea and this is what I love most about Tuesday Talks is we take those ideas and then we just spin them off and make them just awesome in ways that work for our kids. Cool. So neat. So I guess we have to say a big thanks to Lindsay and Tanya because that was a lot of great content that you ladies shared with us today. And um, I'm, we're all super appreciative of that. And now you guys have a challenge for next week. So Tanya, not, not us, Tanya has challenged you <laughs> to try and create something on Jamboard. So I want to hear about it for sure. Even a picture next week would be fun if we could share a picture in the chat or something about it. Um, you can even, go ahead. Sam, I was thinking if someone did create a, their jam next week and uh, they copy and pasted their jam into the chat and we could all have access to it too if they wanted to show something. Everybody would be jamming. Be jamming right. everywhere. <laughs> Um, I also have to say before everyone leaves to next week, I think we are going to do some work around virtual field trips. Is that what we kind of talked about? So little, little I'd love teaser. to. Yeah. So I'd love to see, we were talking that. about this earlier and I know there's a few teachers out there who have done some virtual field trips. So we thought June is coming field trip month is upon us. And although we can't actually take field trips, how neat would it be if you guys would be willing and anybody reach out to us and say, yeah, I'll share what I did with a virtual field trip. And yeah. it would literally be, even if it was a two or three minute clip of you just showing us what you did and we shared, and if a bunch of people want to share their virtual field trips, then you can take those from others and try them with yours. So again, yeah. it doesn't have to be super flashy, but if it's anything that you're willing to share, if you've tried a virtual field trip, we would love to hear from you for next week. And we can kind of just get a bank of them going. Yeah. So we, we can could kind create of compile a jam them all. Them. We could create a jam, a jam of field trip. Everybody can add their oh. field trip sticky to the jam board. <laughs> field trip jams. Love it. <laughs> so I guess that's it for this week. So thanks to everyone for coming. And um, yeah, I hope we can hear from some of you because I know there's tons of field trip ideas out there and so we just we want to hear about them so please share them or or come so you can learn about some so yeah. and if you're not if you're not interested in getting a hold of us ahead of time and it's kind of a last minute feel free if it's up and it's ready to go when you're in zoom and you just want mm -hmm. to show us your field trip we can give you access to the share screen button and you can share just like tanya and Lindsay did for us and then you can just talk us through it doesn't have to be long and just share with each other because we know that uh, sharing is what we all like to do. So sharing is caring, That's as right. Pam would say, if Pam's still there. So, okay. Thanks for jamming with us. Oh my God, it's endless. Like literally endless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm here, but that's Alicia's all the sharing is caring. Okay. <laughs> and I think sharing she's on funny. too. Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> yeah, that jam board is fun. And that yeah, jam, I knew Sam would be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a jam. <laughs> so good. Oh, thanks, Enjoy everybody. Enjoy this beautiful day. Just not toe jam. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See Bye.